Hello everyone, today we're doing something a bit different yet again. We're gonna branch out a bit and talk about something we have never talked about on this channel. Easter eggs. The things that give more depth to the game world and make it feel that much nicer. We're gonna cover 10 in this video and if it's well received we might do some more, so keep a lookout for that. First off, we'll begin with Gravis Slipknot, a rare NPC that wanders Strandbred at the Northern Hills Bread Foothills. Now this could be a reference to a Slipknot, an actual knot, but we all know that it's a reference to the heavy metal band Slipknot. This is pretty much confirmed because the mob will say greetings, hapless adventurer, I only ask that you wait a moment and bleed, which of course is a reference to track 4 Wait and Bleed from Slipknot's 1999 self-titled album and one of the best songs of their discography. Other than that, this guy is just a rare, no special loot, just some greens you could use by leveling if you don't have heirlooms. After beating the first boss of Grimrail Depot, if you head north and up the railing and then head forward and past the angular platform, you can actually jump to the beam on your right, though you may need to use an item or just play a demon hunter and double jump. You go forward on the wooden beam and on your way to the opposite wall you will see a white towel flying around. When you get to the wall itself, you will see a sign for the platform 9 and 3 quarters, though it does not say that outright, the numbers are stylized to be orcish, but you can make out the general shape. You will also see a cart with a chest, a birdcage and a pointy wizard hat. This is all a reference to the Harry Potter series. The white owl is a reference to Hedwig, Harry's owl. The cart has all the things a wizard going to Hogwarts would need. A pointy hat, which is not that much used in the movies, but it is in the books. A cage for the bird if the wizard is carrying one chest for the books I guess and the platform is of course the famous 9 and 3 quarters platform that wizards use on their first day of school to get to Hogwarts. There are two references to the main antagonist or protagonist I guess of Friday the 13th movies Jason Voorhees. First one I'm sure most of you are familiar with, the Jason Mathers guy at the Crystal Lake in Goldshire, a clear reference to Jason and the Camp Crystal Lake where Jason in the movies drowned. The other reference is in Voldun, where you can find Jason's rusty blade near a skeleton. When you pick it up, you will see that it's just a junk item, that you can sell for measly 62 silver, 80 copper to vendors. It is part of the Scavenger of the Sands achievement though, so if you're hunting for it, here it is. There are a few references to Disney movies in World of Warcraft. First one is one of the darker easter eggs in the game, also a more recent one that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about. The Little Mermaid and her friends in Exile's Reach. On the shore of the beach at the eastern side of the Exile's Reach, there is a skeleton that at first seems human, but then you see that it has a fish tail. Ok so what, so it's just a naga or something you might say. Well, if you take a look at the skeleton's chest you will see two blue shells where the breasts once were, and if you take a look around in the water you will see a blue striped yellow fish and a dead crab on the beach. This is a reference to the little mermaid Ariel and her friends Flounder and Sebastian. Damn dude what happened to Ariel, why you do this blitz? Oh well maybe we'll see more of Ariel and Sebastian in the Shadowlands somewhere, maybe some aquatic realm of afterlife, who knows. Another Disney movie that has been referenced recently in World of Warcraft is Winnie the Pooh and his friends in Stormsong Valley, sitting around a honey wet. The names are slightly changed of course, with Winnie being Honey Bear, Eeyore being the Melancholy Mule, Piglet being Pig. Tigger being Tiger and Christopher Robin, the boy from the story, being Hunter Robin. Also, the honey wet gives Azerite when you click on it. The third Disney movie reference is also from Battle for Azeroth, a reference to Jungle Book in the northeastern Zuldazar. There is a book called Jungle Studies and also a group of NPCs who are referencing characters from the Jungle Book, with names once again being slightly different, Moglav being Mowgli, Eka being Akela, Bad Blue being Bagheera, etc. There are also some dead villains from the movie, in case you missed it. Yeah. In the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, there is a place called Mistfall Village. In the main building of the village, you can find a chicken playing a guitar. That's it, nothing more to it. This is not a reference to anything, it's just a chicken looking for some copper for the tasty, tasty chicken food. At the northeastern corner of Ardenwild, you will come across two NPCs. Gwyntsirv, the winter wolf, who is a hunter of the wild hunt, and Daffodil, a night fae who is a bard. Daffodil will ask you to help him search for a monster while the other dude is brooding in the corner. As you go around searching for the monster, he will start to sing at one point which will attract its attention. After the monster is beaten, Daffodil will sing you another song, toss a seed to your hunter. 
There is also an achievement of the same name associated with this event which requires you to toss a seed to Gwynserv during the fight. You can find the seed not too far from the place where you will fight the rare. These are all obvious easter eggs to the Witcher series. Gwynserv is Welsh for white deer and his title is the Winter Wolf. Geralt in the Witcher series is sometimes called Gwynblade, which means white wolf. One of the side characters in the Witcher series is a bard called Dandelion or Jaskier, and if you have watched the Witcher Netflix series, you are most likely familiar with the toss a coin to your Witcher song, which is also referenced here. You may also notice the proclivity of the Winter Wolf to say, hmm, which is something that Geralt says a lot in the Witcher Netflix series. If you ever fly around Old Negrand from TBC for whatever reason, you might have come across a place called Chalice Home for Little Tanks. Around this, what seems to be like a kindergarten of sorts, you can find a lot of babies of all different World of Warcraft races, all being cared for by a troll female called Chale. Chale is standing in front of a big cooking pot, but this is where it gets kinda creepy. There is this tower baby on a merry-go-round and there is a creepy looking doll at the merry-go-round. There is a doghouse that has no dog and rotten food inside. And creepiest of all, there are some cages around the hut and in one of them there is a humanoid looking skeleton that seems to be the size of a child. Bruh, what, what is that doing there? Now, now, okay, maybe it's not so bad, maybe she's just there to take care of the orphans of war and has no bad intentions and the skeleton is there for whatever reason, right? Well, I will take you back in time, all the way to Draenor. In Warlords of Draenor there is a quest called Guise of the Deceiver. It is given to you by an NPC called Garok. The quest text states, In a cave not far from here, there lives an old woman named Chale. I knew Chale many years ago when I was young. Though as I have become old and grey, she has kept her youth and beauty. Chale was jealous of my love for the Hakka and I have long suspected that Chale had a part in her death. However, without evidence, I could not bring justice against her. Meet with Chale and tell her that I am dying. Tell her that I wish to know the truth of the Hakka's fate before I leave this world. The Hakka is obviously the mate of this orc. So Chale, on an alternate Draenor. How is there a Chale on alternate Draenor when trolls are native to Azeroth? I mean sure, she might have come through the portal with us, but the quest clearly says that Garok knew her for a long time. Well anyway, when we go to confront Chale, she reveals that she in fact killed the Hakka and drained her life energy to stay young. She shapeshifts into the late Dahaka and at one point even turns into a female troll, the same one we saw in TBC's Nagrand. What Chale is, we will never know. We can only speculate. Maybe in a future expansion, we might get to find out. If you're a fan of Blizzard games, you most likely know that their first game was called The Lost Vikings. If you're a hardcore fan, you might even own it. Blizzard has not forgotten the game though, because you can find a few references to it in Uldaman. First off, you can see the Vikings themselves, Olaf, Eric the Swift and Balog, and if you're Horde you can even fight them. The other two references are the Shaft of Zol and Gnikiv Medallion. This is a reference because Zol spelled backwards is lost and Gnikiv spelled backwards is Viking, so Lost Viking. During your time leveling in Ardenville, if you're doing the main storyline quests, you will come across a 7 quest long chapter called This is the Way. This quest line will have you escorting a wild seed through Ardenville. This is very important for the story, so I will not spoil the quest line here, but I will tell you by what it was inspired. The whole quest line, from the name down to the execution, is a reference to the popular TV show The Mandalorian. The name, this is the way, is a saying of the people of the Mandalorian. The wild seed is being escorted in a cradle, not too different to how the Mandalorian is escorting the child, more commonly known as Baby Yoda in the show. For the end, we will be showing one of the oldest, but also one of the least known easter eggs in the game. If you fly above the temple of An Kiraj, you can see that the whole place is shaped like a scarab. This is a really, really cool detail and I can't believe I never knew about this before researching for this video. John Stats, a vanilla WoW designer, envisioned it to be a scarab, but he had some issues with it, as he said in a WoWhead interview he did a few years back. My intent was to cut two grooves into an oval structure, forming form a scarab from bird's eye view. This drives in Chris Madsen's direction that the temple should only hint at being Egyptian. But grooves cutting through the building meant I couldn't connect the floor plan together, 
so most of the spaces inside were awkward and useless dead ends. I was bending over backward to pull off the scarab groove concept and as it turned out it wasn't even something players saw. Dead ends like these are the symptomatic of assets built early in a project. In every sense I'd figuratively painted myself into a corner. And there you go, that's 10 interesting easter eggs I found for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video feel free to leave a like and if you wanna know more interesting easter eggs consider subscribing, I will probably do another video like this down the line. For now I bid you farewell and I will see you in the next one, peace.